This is, this is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. Uh, another fairly quiet, really quiet weekend of boxing. Not much going on again, uh, but it's good to be back. We're getting to Freddie Roach. Uh, he had a fighter named Giovanni Cabrera uh, fight um, yesterday uh, on the uh, top ranked card in, in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, and he had. Um, McSayo fight last week. So I want to get into that, where he is as a trainer. But before we do, please like and subscribe. Share on all forms of social media. Uh, 3D Boxing comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, uh, to keep you up to date on the latest boxing news and rumor. Please also subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, on YouTube. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. So please like and subscribe to that channel as well. Um, Freddie Roach, famed trainer. Um, it depends who you ask. Six, seven, five, eight time trainer of the year. Uh, different publications, different outlets uh, have given him you know, all the accolades. Hall of Fame trainer, not taking anything away from Freddie Roach. Um, but there's a, a clear trend. Freddie Roach isn't as sharp as he used to be. Uh, he obviously has medical issues, neuro, neurological issues, neurological. Uh, you know, he, he's not mentally what he used to be and i'm not trying to degrade him or, or anything like that it's just it's it's, it's self-evident it's, it's it's the truth um his stable isn't what it used to be he he used to have the kodo patent um kodo um pack yeah he had fred uh, julio cesar chavez jr uh, he had an incredible stable amir khan um he doesn't have that anymore he he is not the hired gun that it used to be. Is there a reason for that? Is he slipping? Is he? Are his best days behind him? Or, or, or is the medical condition catching up to him? His last two performances, his last two weeks, have not been good. Um, he's got this prospect, Giovanni Cabrera, Cabrera, who fought on the top rank card. Uh, he got a decision over uh, Rene Telez Giron um, in an eight round fight. He won most of the rounds. Um, I, I think I had it six to two. I think is where I had it. Um, and, and look, Cabrera is a is a, is a, is a unconventional southpaw who looks weird. There's no game plan though. Like, where was Freddie Roach's game plan? Cabrera was just kind of jabbing from the outside, he, he, and he throws him combinations. He never put the pressure on. He never tried to stop him. Um, he he, he had uh, Teles Giron in trouble a couple of times. It looked like it, uh, but he never really went for the stoppage. Freddie Roach is a guy that used to train his fighters to go in there, get the opponent out, right? Go in there. And I, I always thought Freddie Roach was a, a little bit overrated, but he was a good offensive trainer. You know, I, I thought his, his, his fighters um, were kind of – they were kind of all patterned the same way. They, you'd see they'd go in and they throw a, bu a bunch of punches, they throw a combination, get out. Jump in, throw a bunch of uh, punches, get out, right? You don't even see that anymore, right? Like you can kind of see that, but I, I just feel like there was absolutely no game plan yesterday with Cabrera. On top of that, he, his weight cutting was ridiculous. I think he was 17 pounds over the day before the fight. Is that is that right? He missed weight badly. He missed weight by three and a half pounds, I think they said. And this is a guy that used to fight at 130. Uh, we saw him fight, and I wasn't impressed with him then, uh, in Chicago on the Usyk Witherspoon card. That was the last time he fought. That was in late 2019. Um, now we, we, we have him on this card. Again, he did not look good. He didn't just look good. There was no game plan. There was no there was no rhyme or reason for his punches. It looked amateurish. It it it, it I could not believe I was watching a Freddie Roach fighter. Defensively, he's a mess. He's getting hit with counter shots. He's out of position when he throws punches. Um it, it was not a good performance. After the, the um Maguire fight. Um and that was tough to take too. That was to me. The 
the first sign that there may be something wrong with Freddie Roman, the, the, the McSayo fight, right? McSayo was fighting Gary Russell Jr., who's probably got the best jab in the sport, who didn't have his jab on, who literally could not throw a jab. And McSayo followed him, chased him around the ring. Why would you do that? The guy literally can't jab. Gary Russell Jr., who's got the best jab in the sport, literally could not jab. So McSayo follows him around, stand in the center of the ring and jab with him. You know why? Because he can't jab you. The only thing he can do, literally the only thing he can do, is throw counter right hands. So don't follow him around the ring. Make him come to you and just sit there and jab him. And if all you do round after round is learn a couple more jabs than him, guess what? You win the fight. But he can't sit there and count you with the right hand. That fight was way too close. And a lot of people thought Gary Russell Jr. won. And I, I just don't understand how a trainer like Freddie Rose doesn't – an all-time great trainer, a great boxing mind, one of, the, one of the great boxing minds ever, has his fighter just following around Gary Russell Jr. who can't jab. Stick your feet – plant your feet in the ground and just jab him. Do not come to him. Don't follow him around the ring, right? Don't do that. That's the last thing you do because the only thing he can do is counter you. So he's either going to sit there and throw a lead right hand – just time him. He, he, there's the only thing he can do. Just time him and come over it and outwork him, out jab him, jab him, jab him, jab him. Make him come to you. But it, it never it used to it happen in very small doses. And I, 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 just, I, you didn't hear Freddie Roach beating that into his head, berating his body with "Don't follow him around the ring. Plant your feet. Jab him. Jab him. Make him throw lead right hands. Time it, counter it, or and and, and just jab him." Right, stay away from him, jab. He cannot jab you. He 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 doesn't have a right hand. All he has, all he has, is the straight left. The only thing Gary Russell could could throw in that fight was the straight left. Nothing else he could throw. His right hand, his jab hand, his lead hand was was absolutely. He threw it about twice or three times after the first five rounds. So why would you follow him around and do that? It doesn't make any sense. Gary Russell Jr. is southpaw, beautiful jab. All can do is throw the straight lefts. Stay away from his left hand. Don't follow him around the ring. I know I was saying right. I, I, I confused myself. Gary Russell Jr. obviously southpaw. All he can do is throw the left hand. That's all he can do. Um, and uh, McSayo followed him around the ring. Then you, you you come to this performance um, with Cabrera, which there's no rhyme or reason. There was really no game plan. I, I don't know what Cabrera was doing. And, and then he had this horrible, ridiculous weight cut, cut like he's never done this before. I don't know what's going on in that camp. I don't know how much time Freddie Roach is giving to Giovanni Cabrera, but he doesn't have the same stable, the same gym that he used to, where his time was taken away by all these world-class fighters. He doesn't have that anymore. So I don't know what he's doing in there, but this is a, this is a sad sign right now from Freddie Roach. It looks like he may be done um, as a world-class trainer. And look, God bless him. He's had an amazing career. Right, Hall of Famer, one of the, one of the most famous trainers of all time. I'm not taking away from, but guys, look at look at these performances that he's that he's putting out with his fighters, and look at his lack lack of game plan. Guys, let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts, comment below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Um, it is January 30th, um, 2022, um, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. Three Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.